Okay, so before I start the video, I have a quick announcement. As I said in my video yesterday, I have an announcement for today's video, which is I am doing a giveaway contest on my Instagram page. If you don't follow it already, it's at the prog nerd. And I will be posting the rules and terms and conditions on my Instagram page. It's a very simple contest and I'll be writing down all the usernames who enter the contest, putting them into a hat and pulling them out. And um, the one that I pull out first will be the winner. So uh, if you're interested in winning a copy of Works Volume 1 by Emerson Lake and Palmer on vinyl, brand new copy still sealed, then check out my Instagram page for the rules of the contest. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who don't have Instagram. So I'm going to explain the contest rules for you guys who are using either Twitter or don't have any social medias and are using YouTube. So for the Twitter lot, I will be posting a photo of the rules. And what I'd like you to do is to retweet that first. And secondly, I would like you to post a picture of your favorite progressive rock album and explain to me why it's your favorite prog album and obviously tag me so that I can see it. Um, and I will put your username into a hat along with the Instagram lot and it will be pulled out on the 1st of March, 2021. And as for all of you who are using YouTube, so what I'm going to do later is I'm going to post a community post. Just It will just say something like, leave your links here for the contest, what I'd like you to do is to make a video explaining your favorite progressive rock album and why it's your favorite prog album. And as I said, I will be putting your username into a hat and announcing it on the 1st of March. Everything will just get put into this one hat. So it will include everyone from multiple different social medias and one person will get to win a brand new copy of Works Volume 1. I will show it to you now to show that I am not lying to you. So here it is. It's even got the sticker still on the front and it's sealed completely. And you can have a chance to win this lovely, brilliant album that is still sealed. Now on with the video. So as I said in my video yesterday, I'm going to be doing a Emerson, Lake and Palmer album ranking video. Now, before I start, these are all my opinions. So maybe your favorite ELP album is second or third on my list, but it's your number one. These are all just my personal opinions and you don't have to agree with them. That's the point of this video is to just tell you guys my personal opinions and you can leave your personal opinions in the comments section below. Uh, I'd love to hear what your fav top three favorite ELP albums are if you were to rank them. So let's start. As you can tell, I do love this band quite a lot. I've got a lot of their pictures around my room and I've listened to pretty much all of their albums, all their studio albums. Um, and there are 10 of them um, on here. Uh, so I'm gonna start with number 10 and then work my way up to number one. Number 10 is In The Hot Seat. I don't have that on vinyl currently, but it is my least favorite Emerson Lake and Palmer album. Personally, just didn't really click with that album, didn't really like it that much. I mean, it was the last album they ever made as a group, last studio album, and I just, just didn't like it very much. It's got some okay songs on it, but I wouldn't rank it higher than below. And you're probably wondering, well, how is Love Beach not number 10? Well, Love Beach is coming up soon. So, as I said, just wasn't a fan of this record. Um, I prefer the early ELP sound anyway, but I I don't mind it. All these albums I don't actually mind. If they're at the bottom, it doesn't mean I hate them. It just means that they're not my favorite. Um, but perhaps it'll grow on me the more I listen to it. I've only ever really listened to it once or twice. So I haven't really got a full growth. It hasn't grown on me at all and I, listened to it twice and it just didn't grow on me that much and didn't really connect with it that much so that's why it's number 10 on the list. Number 9, Love Beach, an um, album that we talk about a lot on this channel. Now the only reason that it's not number 10 is because of Side 2. Side 2 is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion. Side 1 is the side that everyone sees as really just kind of tacky pop. Um, but I think that that album is worth buying just for side two. I mean, it's a 20 minute long epic and I really do love it. Not in my top epics of all time, but it is a very great track on the album. And I think that that makes up for 
the first side of the album and I think that the majority of the hate of Love Beach does actually come from the album cover itself so I think that if you have your opinions on Love Beach and you haven't listened to it yet I think you should listen to it just to hear side two because side two is very very good. Number eight the first 90s album that ELP did Black Moon I actually quite liked this record it was quite a good comeback one from Love Beach and I'm not going to be including the Emerson Lake and Powell album in this list purely because it's not Emerson Lake and Palmer uh, but I digress so that was their first studio album since Love Beach and I think it was a pretty good comeback record actually so I would put that as number eight and I wouldn't really put it any higher I did like quite a lot of the tracks on it especially the live versions on the the live in Switzerland record which was 1997 but um, I do think that this record is a great comeback number seven works volume two now i as you can tell not my favorite of the works albums i think that it's got its moments but there are quite a lot of tracks on this that i wouldn't really i didn't really like that much i mean i could have put this album lower but there are some tracks that i do love on this album and i think it starts off strong it's got a great start to it but i just think that some of it was just a little bit too tacky for me but that doesn't mean I dislike it in any way. It's just I wouldn't go out of my way to re-listen to it probably for a long time. Um, but I know a lot of... I saw some comments actually on the Love Beach video saying that people think that Works Volume 2 is worse than Love Beach. Uh, I don't think so because I think that Love Beach has side two, which is its redeeming quality. But I think there's more tracks on Works Volume 2 that are better than the first side of Love Beach as a whole. But I didn't mind this album. I do did quite like I do like the orchestration used in both works volume one and two, which I'll get on to. Um, but not my favorite of the works, as you can tell. And um, it did kind of lead into what Love Beach would become, if you can catch my drift, because it did have that kind of poppy aspect to it before Love Beach came along. So, um, that could just be like a pre-Love Beach kind of thing towards the end of the album. I thought it was just not as good. Uh, <laughs> that's all I have to say, really. There's my cat. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Number six. Now, I might get a little bit of, pe of controversy on this one. I think... Some people might be getting a little angry, but I'm putting pictures at an exhibition as number six. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this record a lot. I love the way that they were able to take a classical piece of music and make it into a more contemporary progressive rock record. I really do love this and I do love the live versions that they do on certain albums and certain live albums and stuff like that. But I, again, just more of a fan of the originality of Emerson Lake and Palmer. I mean, I do, as I said, I do love this record, but I prefer their original material and I do love, and you know, I think it was a great rendition of the original piece of music pictures at an ex exhibition, but I wouldn't put it higher than number six and maybe people are gonna get annoyed about that. But again, my personal opinions, um, I do love the record and I keep saying that, but um, yeah. Number five, this is why this is gonna create some controversy because number five, I'm gonna put Works Volume One just for the first side of the record and also, so I put it in for side one and probably side four as well, which is just fanfare for the common man, but I do also love side three of this record. Um, I definitely prefer the Keith Emerson side of this record. And I think that is better than pictures and exhibition personally. Um, but I do love this record. Say La Vie is one of my favorite ELP songs of all time. I mean, it was one of the first ones that I heard when I started re-listening to them again. And just a great record. You know, I think that they've done some great live versions of stuff from this album and they were then the use of the orchestra again was perfect on this record, better than Works Volume 2, um, but especially the orchestration behind Say La Vida, I think that's absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful song. What you doing? I'm getting stared at by my cat. <laughs> Number four, we're getting into the juicy part of the video coming up to my favorite ELP albums. So number four, I'm gonna put in Brain Salad Surgery. Absolutely brilliant record. And 
I would rank it higher, but there are the weakest track on this album is one that I don't particularly like too much, but the rest of it is absolutely brilliant. Benny the Bouncer, that's the name of the track I don't really like too much. It's almost like a Jeremy Bender type song, but um, I do love the album as a whole. That song is just pretty weak for me. I mean, I do love it. I will sing along to it, but I think that, you know, that album is Carnival 9. Carnival 9 is that album, and it's absolutely brilliant piece of music written by the group and put into a live form on later live albums was absolutely brilliant. The way they've done that is very, very good. And... I find that every time I listen to this album, it just gets better for me. So this, if I ended up doing a follow-up video to this, it would probably be ranked a bit higher because I have been listening to this record a lot more um, in recent days, but I would rank it as of now number four on my list because of that track being quite weak, but maybe it will grow on me eventually. There have been times where I've listened to albums and not really liked them at first, and, or songs I've listened to that I've not really liked at first, but they've grown on me completely. I mean, some of my favorite songs of all time are growers. You know, I think that if you don't like an album at first and it's able to grow on you, I'm able to love it more than if it's an instant love, because if it's an instant love, it you tire it out pretty easily, but if it's something that grows on you, it tends to stick around a bit more, which I find with, found with Prog, really, it was something that really stuck to me. I mean, it didn't hit me instantly. I took a long time to kind of listen to longer music and, you know, get rid of my short, shorter attention span when it came to music. And now I can listen to an eight minute song and not really feel eight minutes go past. Isn't that right? Um, number three, getting into the top three ELP albums, which are, you know which ones are gonna be coming up now, but um, it's just a matter of what order they're gonna be in. So number three is the self-titled debut of the of the band, and um, which is just Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Absolutely brilliant record. I love every track on this album, but what stops it from being any higher than three is just, it wasn't as proggy as the stuff that I'm about to mention. I found that it was a great, great debut album, but I prefer their more proggy take, as the proggy take on music. And, you know, I mean, I've been playing Knife Edge on bass for like the past week, I've been learning it. So I do really love this record, but I do prefer their more proggy outlook. And I'm not saying that this album is, pro is, is not prog because it definitely is, but I prefer the more experimental side of the group. It has a very, very, very good starting track. I mean, the opener of the album is fantastic, The Barbarian. It's a great instrumental piece of just absolute chaos. And that's probably what takes it ta why it takes the number three spot because of that intro and the way the album closes as well. And it's got the song Lucky Man on it. And who doesn't like that song? It's a great, great song. <laughs> number two, Trilogy, one that I've been listening to a lot recently and really falling in love with a lot the way it starts and the title track I think is what takes it for me because of how beautifully composed it was uh, and the way that it was executed basically the way it was put together the whole format of the album is absolutely fantastic I love I think that it's probably my favorite like Keith Emerson album, if you know what I mean. Like, his best work, I think, was on that album, especially with tracks that, such as The Endless Enigma Parts 1 and 2, and I and just the title track, the piano playing on that is just absolutely fantastic and takes it for me. That takes the number two spot. And I think that that one is weirdly underrated in a way because even though it has got From the Beginning on it, the rest of the album is equally as good and I think that it, it it deserves the number two spot. I know a lot of people don't like Trilogy very much, but I absolutely love it. And number one, you've guessed it by now, is Tarkus. Now, the reason Tarkus is number one is it's got a lot of, not nostalgia, but it's got a lot of meaning to me because it was the first ELP album I ever listened to. And the first, it has the first long song or long track that I've ever fallen in love with because when I first heard it, I was very much stressed. I was doing a lot of work at the time. This was for college work. And I listened to that album. I just put it on because I knew that my dad liked it. And I think he might have recommended it to me at some point or something. And I listened to it and I just stopped doing my work. And I just sat there 
and I just completely took in the music. That whole album, I love every single song. I know most of the lyrics of every single side. I just think it's absolutely well composed from start to finish. And just an absolutely fantastic record all overall. It's probably my favorite for the kind of sentiment, but the music is absolutely fantastic as well. You know, you can't deny that Tarkas is a brilliant album. That is my video for today. As I said in many other videos, getting my opinion out is quite hard for me because I'm always sometimes hesitant to say things in case of backlash. And I know I shouldn't be scared because I could care less about hate comments, but I just sometimes get a little worried, that's all. And I've tried my very best to project my um, feelings and opinions into this video because this is a very much opinionated video because it is my personal rankings of all their albums and it's not going to be the same as yours it's not going to be the same as my dad's it's not going to be the same as my friends it's my personal list and if you're going to say like why isn't this one higher why isn't that one higher feel free to say that but i think i've covered it pretty much in this video um, and yeah, so tomorrow there will not be a video, I'll be writing up my review, as always, on a Tuesday, but, um, yeah, so good luck if you're gonna enter my contest on Instagram, I'm gonna post that now, when you're seeing this, it would have been already posted, I reckon. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed, leave your own opinions in the comments, I'd love to know yours. Sorry, my cat's been jumping around in the background, um, but I will see you on Wednesday with a new review. Bye-bye. Oh, shush. <laughs>